Hi, and welcome to another episode of the SERS Group Podcast. I am JC. And I'm Barbara. And today we are going through phase four of the Shoemaker Protocol. We've been doing this series. So we did phase one, phase two, phase three. Go check out those episodes. Today we are talking about metabolism repair. And this is three steps, detox, balance hormones, and balance electrolytes. Good times. And this is another, um, if you watched our last episode, we talked a little bit about uh, the SERS protocol being kind of like a Gantt chart and things can kind of happen simultaneously. This is a good example. This phase is a good example of things that can kind of happen uh, a little bit at the same time of other things. Um, I know that I've definitely touched on all three of these uh, throughout my SERS protocol, maybe even before I started officially the protocol as well. How about you? Yeah, I would say the big caveat there is detox because mm. detox is just fascinating to talk about in the context of SERS because you would think, well, my body is overburdened with all of these toxins. Let me get rid of them. But wait, um, if you have SERS, it means that your detox systems aren't working correctly. So if you start a detox, like generic detox protocol, I'm not talking about the biotoxin binders, which are really specific to SERS. I'm talking about like charcoal and clay and antifungals and antiparasitics, it can actually put pressure on a system that's broken. It's kind of like trying to ride a bike with broken wheel. It's just not going to be a comfortable experience for anyone. Uh, so some people, you know, if you do start the detox steps before you do surge treatment and you have a really negative reaction to that, that could be one more indicator that you do have SERS. Absolutely. And I can speak to, with experience on this. I was diagnosed with SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth uh, back in September of 2020. And I was not diagnosed with SIRS until um, May of 2022. So uh, that was over a year of thinking I just had SIBO and that was the problem. And so I did do a couple rounds of antibiotics, both the conventional and the herbal, trying to eradicate that out of my system. Guess what? Didn't work. Uh, and so I have a lot higher hopes of this, of possibly doing those same antibiotics later, or uh, there's another um, way of killing SIBO called the elemental diet. Uh, I may need to do those, one of those three options, but I will do them again later on after SIRS is fully eradicated from my system so that I, when I actually do that detox process, my body can fully recover and actually you know, keep it into place rather than let it overgrow again. So the point with this one being just make sure you're communicating with your provider. They'll let you know when they think that you're in a good spot, both in terms of having reduced the biotoxin load enough and healed enough that you can handle the detox processes. Another um, detox type thing uh, that I didn't mention when I was talking about the the charcoal and clay and anti-parasitics, anti-fungals. Uh, another thing you can do here is liver support. Um, so if you are having liver type symptoms or like uh, just not efficient detox type symptoms, this would also be the place for that. And then, uh, so after a set amount of time that your practitioner will let you know, you would you could then move on to a focused effort on balancing your hormones. And usually the things that are low in people with SIRS is testosterone and DHEA, which are both certainly low in me. How about you, JC? <laughs> Mine were actually normal. Um, oh, good. Yeah, it, basically the only thing that was. <laughs> but a lot of people will also start supplementing for this before they get to this step. Um, so I think for you, you started it with your foundational steps. You started it with your lipid replacement. So you you started supplementing with DHEA, if I remember correctly. I'm just going to share your treatment plan with everyone. Yeah, go for it. That's totally fine. Yeah, that is completely accurate, first of all. Um, and uh, I did notice an improvement of my DHEA and testosterone levels as a result of the supplementation, um, even before I had passed the VCS test, in fact. Um, so that was definitely useful. And that didn't matter to me, especially at the time, because I was able to work out. I was still in the gym and lifting weights, and I had not really grown much muscle even though I was going pretty consistently for uh, about a year at that point. 
So I'm glad that I felt good enough to go to the gym. Not everyone does when they uh, have SIRS, but I was not seeing the results that I wanted. Um, and of course, my body was busy doing other things. And also my my hormones were out of whack. So, so yeah, that was uh, one of the reasons that uh, me and my practitioner decided DHEA was, made sense for me to take from the beginning. Yeah. And I'll just say, like, if your practitioner recommends hormones before you, you know, do the binders and the detox step and all this stuff, that might be totally normal. And that's totally the call of your practitioner and yourself, you know, make sure you're advocating for yourself and your treatment. I can't say this enough, but if you can become informed and un- enough about the shoemaker protocol to start advocating for yourself. I think that's like next level SERS treatment. I think that's one of the powers of the SERS group just to plug ourselves a little bit is we do have so many people who've gone through the protocol and they know what did and did not work for them. So you can kind of draw on the experience of others and kind of gain confidence in their experiences for yourself. So if you feel like DHEA is something that might help you because your testosterone is low now, it's something you could mention to your provider because you are informed and you are listening to our podcast. So gold stars for you. Yep, exactly. Always talk to your practitioner before you do or change anything, but definitely use us. And if you're in the group, the group uh, as a resource for making those or making the requests for those changes. Yeah. Or even just knowing it's something you can talk to them about. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Perfect. And the next step is balancing electrolytes. So again, this is something you may and probably did start way before you get to this step. I know I've been taking uh, multi-mins for a very long time now, Um, probably started that with my foundational steps. Personally, I had a lot of, um, a lot of like uh, vertigo pots, uh, like very lightheaded when I stood up kind of symptoms with my SIRS. Hot showers were scary for me for a while because I would just become so lightheaded in the shower. I jokingly say in our SIRS group calls that if uh, you might have SIRS, if you've ever taken a sit down shower and it it feels so accurate because not only do you have like the mood and the emotional stuff, but it's like actually difficult to stand up in hot water and not feel like you're about to pass out. And I know for me personally, the electrolyte supplementation has really helped me kind of just level set and not feel like I'm going to pass out every time I stand up. Yeah. And for me, um, this manifested more in like muscle cramps and, um, and then yes, some lightheadedness in general. Um, but I mean, that started back when I started carnivore. I know a lot of people who are carnivore or keto, uh, take electrolytes regularly and that is um, not necessarily indicative that you have SIRS, but it it is something where once you remove the carbs, you've removed that Band-Aid that maybe you didn't notice you were so off in your electrolytes before. And uh, so some people may actually see a spike in these symptoms, these electrolyte imbalance symptoms when they do go carnivore. And that doesn't make sense because you're doing something healthy for your body. That's still true, uh, but uh, you've now removed that, like I said, that Band-Aid over the electrolyte issue, um, and you probably have to take it all the time or every day. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. Think, I don't know where else I was going with that. <laughs> if you're being super specific about salt intake, either saying like I can't eat any salt or I need to eat a bucket of salt a day. That's me, by the way. Um, I think that at that point, it's like, okay, there's something going on here. My body should be able to balance this on its own. And yeah. we're we're talking about like lightheadedness and stuff like that. But I would say the number one symptom we see for uh, this specifically, and the blood marker is ADH and osmolality, if you're interested in knowing what this is associated with, um, it's peeing in the middle of the night. It's getting up in the middle of the night to pee. It's frequent thirst, frequent urination, anything to do with your... The, the balance of electrolytes and fluid in your body. Yeah. Those are signs that you need to balance your electrolytes. Well, I think, I think that covers it for phase four. Yeah. Phase four is, you know, it's, it's a quicker one and it's also one that's done in tandem with a lot of other things. And so I think when people see like, oh my gosh, there's 12 steps to this protocol. I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. It's like, well, no, (laughs) a lot of these are done simultaneously. So go look at that Gantt chart um, so we can nerd out on that together at some point uh, if you're into project management. But it's it's definitely, you know, this this phase four is like definitely 
part of that subsection that's done simultaneously with a lot of other things. Um, and so we talked about last time, you know, the binders being a really exciting step. And this is more of like paperwork type steps to the protocol where it's like, you got to do it, but it's just like, you just want to knock it out so you can get to that that final step and just a kind of, a, you know, a tease for the next episode, uh, we will be going into the final phase of the Shoemaker Protocol. Yay. That'll be exciting. Um, yeah, I can't wait. It's good stuff, but you, that, that was a perfect analogy though, by the way, the, the admin, this is the admin phase. <laughs> uh, cause yeah, like, I'm just like, Oh, fish oil pill. Like, well, I know fish oil is part of the lipid replacement, but, but in my mind, it's fish, the fish oil, um, the DHEA and the electrolytes are my like, well, this is my daily thing that I take, you know, no matter what else is going on. Uh, that's how I start my day. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a good one. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, if you're looking for more resources and support on your SERS journey, you can join us over at the SERSgroup.com. If you like the information we shared today, go ahead and like, rate, subscribe, comment, do all the things. We always appreciate it. And we will see you in the next episode. See you then.